right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to back to another live stream. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Why am I wearing a mask? Um, so actually, I am not wearing a mask for any reason that has to do with COVID. Um, the reason I'm wearing a mask is, I, I don't know if you all have noticed, but I've actually had this weird cold sore thing on my lip for like a year. And, I, I, and I've gotten cold sores before and they just go away. And I thought this would just go away on its own and it never did. So I went to go see a dermatologist two days ago and they looked at it and said, eh, that could be cancer. <laughs> and, they, and she just said it like that. Now, granted, she did explain like what she meant by that was it seems like it's something that's super localized, uh, non-life threatening, no big deal. Like they, they could just remove it. Uh, so they had to do a biopsy on it and what, how they did the biopsy was they cauterized it with like this little torch and so my lip is all jacked up right now <laughs> and so I do have a bandage over it but even the bandage is kind of unsightly so I thought you know what I still want to do a live stream uh, I don't want people judging me for, <laughs> for wearing a big old band-aid though so I am wearing a mask today so that's why uh, no big deal like it, it again this is probably the first time I've ever been happy to wear a mask <laughs> like like let me be clear um I've always been compliant with wearing masks, but it's kind of like, um, you know, with paying your taxes. Nobody's wild about paying their taxes, but of course everybody's going to pay their taxes. So and same, same idea with that mask. I'm always wearing a mask uh, at work or in public or anything. I am ready for the mask ma mandate to be lifted myself, but this is the first time I've been happy to wear a mask. <laughs> okay, so. All right. So what are we doing today? Uh, we are continuing along with our... Um, Oh, uh, the other elf, uh, littler elephant in the room. Uh, if you keep up with these live streams, you might have recalled that I said last week I wouldn't be here because I would be at Great, Great Wolf Lodge with my family. Um, and so if you are living here in Illinois with me, you might know we got a pretty big snowstorm yesterday. So fortunately, my wife and I were smart enough to be paying attention to the weather earlier this week. And we were thinking, you know, I don't want, we don't want to roll the dice on like trying to drive up to the Wisconsin Dells. Uh, to go to Great Wolf Lodge there. And so we're going to see if we can reschedule. And thank thank goodness, big thank you to Great Wolf Lodge. Uh, they rescheduled us for next weekend uh, at no cost. Actually, uh, because I didn't realize this weekend was President's Day weekend anyway. Um, that uh, So next week's actually going to be a little cheaper for us to go to. So big thank you to Great Wolf Lodge for not giving us a hassle on that. Um, so that said, I am here this week, but I will not be here next week. And this mask is really tight. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, it must be one that I haven't worn in a while. I got a lot of the same kind of mask like this. Oh, uh, yeah. I've never, I've never done, obviously never done a live stream with a mask uh, on. But, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be fun t doing a lot of talk. Like, I don't mind wearing a mask, but, like, apparently doing a lot of talking is not going to be very fun. Okay, so we're, you know, we're, so back to the, back to the matter at hand, the stream here. Um, so what, what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks is we, we've been working on this movie ratings model project. Last week, we, tr uh, fi we formally trained the model in a Jupyter notebook. And so this week, I wanted to take it in, in an interesting direction. Because I said last week we, were, we would probably do inference next. And we, we still will do an inference pipeline um, probably next time. Uh, granted, next week I'm going to be gone. Uh, so probably in two weeks, but I thought it'd be fun. You know, why don't we, tra why don't I teach you all how to train this thing on AWS SageMaker and more specifically using a SageMaker or I'm sorry, a bring your own container pattern. So, uh, just to let you know, I am, uh, I have five AWS certifications, uh, cloud practitioner, solutions, architect, associate, developer, associate, uh, big data specialty, which actually technically no, no longer exists. And then finally, the ML specialty and the ML specialty is interesting, interesting in the sense that I don't. Uh, I, I like AWS. I, I, I like the ideas behind it. Uh, this is the one certification where I don't think it was very good, like just being totally transparent. And the reason I don't think it's very good is uh, because it spends a lot of time covering just like the AWS, like specific algorithms. So if you, you might be aware, um, so we've been working with libraries like Scikit-Learn or Catboost, open source libraries. And uh, so AWS has their own algorithms. And so if you ever study for the AWS ML specialty, they focus on those big time. And honestly, it almost even feels like a little bit of an infomercial. Like, so what they don't talk about in that certification at all is the fact that you can bring your own algorithm and stuff in the form of your own Docker container. Um, and, and so it's not covered in the certification at all. It is in their doc own documentation, so they are not downplaying this at all. Uh, it is a legit thing. I've used it many times um, and it works great. I, I wish they would 
I wish they would have had that as part of the ML specialty, but they don't, um, and that's okay. That's what we're here to do today. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and have me share my screen, and I'm going to talk through a picture that I created here, a little diagram that kind of illustrates how this kind of works at a high level, and then we'll delve, delve into the details a little bit more here, of course. So off on the left, you know, you got you, uh, you obviously being you sitting behind a computer uh, here. And so the way this works is um, when you want to initiate a training job is you first need to take your Docker container. And so the, the Docker container represented by the little whale here, the, the whale being the, the, the common Docker icon. So you, do, you upload your Docker container to the Elastic Container Registry. Actually, let me step back for a second because um, a couple weeks ago, uh, we had deployed our uh, Titanic um, effort as a SageMaker endpoint. So actually, this is kind of a similar concept because in that concept, we uploaded the container to ECR and then we use SageMaker to actually deploy it. Same concept here. We are going to be uploading a container to ECR and then, it's, and then uh, not simultaneously necessarily, but parallel to this, we will also be uploading our, our CSV data uh, to an S3 bucket. And then when we initiate a SageMaker training job, what happens is it takes our Docker container uh, and then it also takes our, our data and puts it inside this training job. And then at the end of the training job, it will take our model artifacts and then save them back into an S3 bucket as this tar.gz file. So if you're not familiar with tar.gz file, it's basically just a compressed file uh, and you can unzip it just like a, an, any old zip file. Um, and I'm going to create in, uh, I'll, I'm creating another, this is the, uh, dot visual number one because I, I I've been take, taking these live streams and then turning them in blog form and publishing for on, publishing them onto Tor Data Science. So I'm, I am going to do another uh, visual, but um, on how the like the Docker container structured. But we'll go ahead and walk through that now. Okay, so where we left off last time. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and open up a Safari. Uh, not fun to talk in this mask. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I don't know if I sound muffled or anything, but it is kind of like hard to breathe. I feel like I'm talking really loud too. Um, okay, so let me go over into GitHub because I just want to show where we left off last time. Okay, so the movie ratings model. Oh, wow, I'm getting more people favoriting, starring this thing. Okay, I see you people. All right, uh, all right, so looking at the notebook. So the notebook we left off last time was this model training notebook. And as you can see here, you know, we are uh, doing everything that we need to in here. Okay, so remember we had to create a couple of helper functions that were um, going to be used as part of the actual pipeline because remember we were doing the feature engineering as part of this pipeline as well. And then, um, so you can see here um, that we have all these different feature engineerings being applied as part of this data processor here. So this column transformer here is all creating this one data processor. And then at the very end of it, so, you know, obviously we're creating two pipelines because they're technically two different models as part of this project. So with this binary classification pipeline, we can create a second learn pipeline that has, uh, does the feature engineering and then does the predictive modeling with the random forest classifier. And same concept for the re regression model, just a little tiny bit different because we had to do the feature scaling as well. Uh, so we have the same feature engineering, we have the feature scaling, and then we put it through our lasso uh, regression algorithm. So that's what we did in the notebook. And so uh, to actually craft this in a way that SageMaker can use it, then we're going to have to use Python files instead. And so transparently, I already did this, uh, partially because I couldn't remember off the top of my head, and I didn't want to have to fiddle around too much on a live stream to get this going. Um, so let's go ahead and pivot over to IntelliJ. Where is IntelliJ? Okay, so IntelliJ here, this is going to look pretty familiar, and uh, I'll talk through some of these other pieces uh, here really quick to so you can get an idea of how this works. Uh, but before I talk about these pieces here, so as you can see, we have uh, our, our, our train um, our training function here. So what the training function does is it takes in the raw data frame uh, uh, with all of our raw data. And you can see here, this is the same code that we were running before. So the same processor, um, uh, the same everything else. And you might be wondering, well, where are the helper functions? And simply put, I just put them in another Python file over here. So you can see in helpers.py over here that I put all of these same helper functions over here. And I, I clean them up with uh, doc strings and everything because I, I really wanted to make this look nice at the very end because I, I kind of want to use this as like a gold standard template of how you can uh, set up your own Git repo in the future for data science projects. Um, so somebody's asking me a question in the chat. Does your mask have a hole for the polar pop? Uh, the answer is no, and that question came from my wife. So thank you, wife, for asking. 
No, the mask does not have a hole for the polar pop, so I just gotta like do it underneath the mask. Okay, all right, so um, nothing really special here. So you can see that when this, um, this, this script is invoked, what we do is we read in uh, the, 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 the CSV file like, into a pandas data frame. Uh, we use the training function to actually get the binary classification and regression pipelines, and then we save them out as serialized files. Now, here's where it gets a little bit weird as far as SageMaker goes. And I, and I shouldn't say weird, it's just different. And I understand why they did what they did. Uh, it, it's honestly a little bit confusing the first time you see it. So, uh, but once you do understand what it's doing, it's, it kind of makes sense. And I want to create my own visual that's a little more intuitive, but let me see if I can find a visual because I know they've created visuals too. Uh, SageMaker BYOC. So BYOC stands for bring your own container. Um, okay, so bring your own container. So like I said, they are not downplaying this at all. Like you, this is a, a functionality that SageMaker offers. I just don't know why they don't have it as study material for um, the AWS ML specialty. Uh, so, I, oh, okay, here's the visual that I wanted to show because this is their visual. I don't think this is a great visual just to be honest, but it, it does the job just fine. Okay, so you can see here the way this is gonna work is um, whenever, so we mentioned that we have, uh, as part of this other visual here, that we upload our data to a CS, or, uh, an S3 bucket, and then after the training job, then the the, uh, the model artifacts go into an, another S3 bucket. Actually, I have them represented here as two different S3 buckets. They can actually be the same. You can, you can have your data in the same bucket as you, the artifacts at the end here. So what you can see here is that when, an, when a uh, SageMaker starts up your uh, a training job, what it does is off on the right here, let me let me make that a little more clear for you. Off on the right here is your container in um, the Elastic Container Registry. And you can see here, it, it says work dir here. I, th I think this is an outdated image, but basically, because uh, you're, I, I think they're now encouraging that you put your actual training scripts and serving scripts inside of uh, uh, the path opt slash uh, program. Cause, so you can see here that you, we see optimal, and I'll talk about that in a bit. So uh, pretend that work there here says op slash program. So you can see here, there's a number of different files. So you got a training script, a train file, serve file, uh, predictor.py, uh, wsgoi.py, and you can ignore some of these. But the, the idea here is, is that when, you're when SageMaker starts up a model training container, and so ignore this top half here, because this top half here is really just talking about uh, inference. Uh, but in the bottom half here, so what it does, is it will, and so same idea as this picture. So in this picture here, we're taking our container from the Elastic Container Registry, and we're taking our model uh, our model data from, an, or not model data, but our, our, well, I guess model data is right. And, and we mount our CSV data up to the same container. So the, say, this is represented the same thing here. It's just a little bit harder to read, I think. So you can see here, when we initiate a training job, uh, our Docker container mounts up the data in, to, in other things to these respective file paths. So uh, more specifically, you'll see that we actually mount the training data up to opt slash ML slash input. And then this is a little bit outdated. It's actually slash train as well. So we'll, the, the, the data itself will be mounted here. And then at the end of the output job, uh, we actually save our artifacts back under this model directory. And so what happens here is, is when the mo when the model is done training and the job is done completing, it will t it will take the artifacts from whatever's in this model directory, and it will uh, save uh, it will bundle them up as a tar.gz file and then put them back into an S3 bucket. And again, it's represented as two different S3 buckets here. You can do one. Actually, we're just going to do one in our little demo later. Um, and so you can see. So let's take a look at that how that manifests here in. Um, um, the script. So you can see here, uh, same concept. We, you know, I note that we are pointing to the primary directory here, where uh, SageMaker data or will be saving its artifacts and loading its artifacts here. So the primary directory here is opslashml, and then same. So same idea here. You can actually note the subdirectories underneath the primary directory of like the different things of how SageMaker will be expecting things. So specifically here, you can see our input path is actually opslashml slash input slash data slash train. And then you can see here that uh, our model artifacts will go into op slash ml slash uh, model. And I did set output here. Output is really not used uh, per se with um, uh, these, uh, oh my gosh, what am I trying to say here? It's not really used for a model training job. Uh, and, and transparently, I'm not using it all here. In fact, I could delete this line and it's not gonna do anything. 
but so as you can see, like, um, you know, th this is all this, th the training script here is all going to make sense to you. It's not doing anything fancy at all. But where it gets a little bit interesting is, so you can see here, so whenever we start up the SageMaker training job, uh, it will it will load this CSV uh, file into the input path that we defined above. So you can see here we're reading that in as a pandas data frame. And then on the other side of it, whenever we are ready to save back our model artifacts, so you can see we've got the two model artifacts being these pickle uh, files for representing each of the models, we just, we just dump them into the same model path. So again, so remember input model path, and if we scroll up here, so input is, the input path is op slash ml slash input slash data slash train. And the model path is op slash ml slash model. So I, I know that can be, a, the very first time I saw this, I'll be just totally honest, it was like kind of mind, like mind weird blowing. I don't know if mind blowing is the right word, but like it was just really hard to wrap my mind around. Uh, but after you do it a couple times, it's really kind of easy. Um, and so that's really, that's one special thing that you need to do, you have to have done with one of these SageMaker train containers is you have to you have to point to the right input and output paths and then the only other thing that you also have to know is when your training job is done it requests that you exit out with a zero code because that that's how it lets you know that SageMaker the SageMaker job is done so you can see here the very last line here exiting with the zero code to let SageMaker know the training jobs uh, success or completion I guess I could have put completion so that's why we have the sys dot exit zero here. Oh, I'm a little bit winded. Let me take a quick breather. Um, I hope this all makes sense to you so far. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Any questions? I don't see any other questions aside from my wife trolling me. Uh, I don't have my bots yet today. Usually I got one or two Russian bots in here. Um, uh, yeah, but nothing yet. Okay, so... Oh, there is one thing I, for, I forgot to mention. So this is obviously being started up as a Docker container. And so um, the way the Docker container is actually initiated is it's looking for uh, a couple different scripts. Uh, and specifically with training job, it is looking for a file that is called just train. So you can see actually off on the left here. Uh, so when we build our Docker container, everything in this containers directory is going to get moved into the container. And I'll show you the Docker file here in a minute. But you can see that we have a train file here. And what this train file is, is it's really just a baby bash script. Uh, and in fact, uh, well, I'll show you here in a bit what how, how to get this working properly. But you can see here when I in initiate, when, whenever SageMaker actually initiates this, it will run a Python slash model training. So you can see that our train.py file is actually under this model training directory. So that's all this little file is doing, but it's absolutely required. Uh, and so actually, let me show you another interesting thing here really quick, because I like to, oh, I wonder why that happened. Interesting. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, uh, I don't know why I got two SageMakers test directories over here, but basically you can see here, I like to test things out um, using like a test directory. So let me go ahead and show you this local train script here. So I have a little bash script here. And what this bash script is doing is it will take my data from like my data directory and move it into this m like mocked up version of a SageMaker test directory, as you can see here. And then we're building the container and then here's the interesting part, this this line here, line 16. So we're when we actually, after we finished building the Docker container, we run a Docker run command. So, and what the Docker run command here, or this V command here, uh, V stands for volume. Um, and so by default with Docker, um, it uh, is not real, it's kind of in its own separate environment from the rest of your computer system. So if you wanted to use something like a local directory to test out things, uh, with your Docker container, you have to mount it up to the Docker container using this dash V or dash dash volume command. And so, as you can see here, we're taking, because this is running at the root directory of the repository. So it's taking the this directory. So the reason it says PWD here, so print working directory, it's going to take our, print, our current working directory, which is the root of the directory, go down into test, go down into SageMaker test directory, and I don't know why I'm so, so actually, so transparently I did all this work on my, um, my Microsoft surface over here and then I transferred it over here. So I don't know, um, what got lost in translation there, but anyway, so we are mounting this directory, which is the same as this directory over here as if it is opt slash ham now. And, and then you can see here on the end as well. So we are, we have the name of the container here. And instead of defining an entry point uh, for the container, uh, we just have it set as train. And the reason we don't want to define an entry point is these containers are nice in the sense that they can be uh, used for multiple purposes. 
So I can have one container that, ha that has my training scripts. Uh, one, the same container can have my uh, scripts that will be served for batch inference or a real-time API. Or, uh, or you can also have like scripts for pre-processing. And so that's why I created this little shell script here is that so I can do my local testing just fine as if I am training on SageMaker. Okay, so let's look at the Docker file real quick. Docker file, nothing really super fancy. Um, so we are using a Python 3.9 Slim Buster image. Uh, in case you're curious why I am doing this, the, this installing the Linux dependencies here, it's because for some reason, if I don't have this specifically, it won't work on my Mac mini here. So that's just a me issue. I think you can technically, if you're a Windows user or a Linux user, you can get away with not having this. Um, then we are uh, copying over our requirement, our, our requirements.txt file. So if you look inside the dependencies folder here in the requirements.txt, let me see if I can just go do a split right here. Okay, so you can see that I am in installing all of the, the data science libraries that I'm using, uh, or not data science libraries, but the Python libraries that I'm using to support my data science work. And then you'll see we actually do have a couple of environment variables that AWS SageMaker requires. And I'm gonna to be totally transparent with you all. I don't really know uh, at least what these first two are doing. Uh, I do know that you, you do have to have them or it won't, this won't work. Uh, so I will recommend, I, I think I looked it up once and it did, make, it did make sense to me why you need it, but I can't remember why. So just Google if you really wanna know why these are not working. And then of course you need to update your path. Um, and so uh, I do have, am exposing a container port. This is not really important for uh, the training job, but it would be more important if I were to run like a, uh, if I were to use this container for uh, the, the SageMaker inferences, like creating a SageMaker endpoint. And then here's the important piece. So you can see that I am copying the uh, directory, uh, the container directory, which contains all these files here, including my model training files into the ops slash program directory. And then I'm actually setting the working directory to be op slash program. So, um, you know, honestly, I'm not 100% sure if you actually do have to set it as opt slash program. I wonder if it could really be anything if you, so long as you uh, uh, like note the work di working directory specifically. I would encourage you to keep it as such this way anyway, but because for this reason of, you know, if you look in the training.py file here, uh, we are, um, Sorry, yeah, I got a little bit distracted there. Yeah, we are noting that um, you know everything's gonna be basically be under opt, and so if you had like your working directory be another part of the container, it could just get messy to try to work with. So I would encourage you to all to still to just stick with the opt program directory, and then you can see here at the very end. Um, so the, these these little files over here that are basically shell scripts, they do need to be executable files. So you can see here, that's what this run chmod command is doing. Is it's, it's turning all three of these files into little executable files. So, all right, so what, all right, let's go ahead and jump into SageMaker then. Um, so uh, actually first, I should say AWS in general, because we need to first do a couple of things. Uh, I already did a little bit of pre-work uh, on this, so you'll see that some of this stuff is already done for me. All right, so I'll go ahead and input my password with my fingerprint there. All right, authentication. I need to pull this up off of my, my Microsoft Authenticator. Okay, wait for a second to refresh. Okay, so one, zero, three, six, two, three. Uh, if you do have an AWS account, I would very highly recommend you set up multi-factor authentication with something like your phone. That way you can have extra uh, control over your costs and stuff. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do, uh, referencing back to this image here is, well actually the first two things is we need to make sure our data is in the S3 bucket appropriately, and we are gonna to need to create a uh, Elastic Container Registry to upload our Docker to. So let me go into my S3, um, and uh, I think I already did this, but just wanna make sure, just to be perfectly safe, all right. So we go into S3 here, and I created a bucket called uh, DK Hunley Movie Ratings Model. Um, so we'll go into here, and you can see I went ahead and created two different directories. So in each of these directories, so this is the, the artifacts directory is where our model artifacts are going to end up going after the SageMaker job is trained. And the data file obvi or directory obviously contains our CSV data. So you can see I already did upload the all, da all our, our, our raw data as all data.csv or all underscore data.csv. 
And if I go back here to the artifacts directory, there is nothing in here, uh, which will be obviously populated by our model artifacts after we complete this job. Okay, so nothing nothing fancy here with S3. I'm gonna go ahead and open a new tab because I do wanna keep this one open. Uh, so the next thing we need to go to is the elastic container registry. So elastic, elastic container registry. So this is probably gonna be pretty familiar for you folks who uh, saw the, the other live stream uh, regarding um, the, the creation of the SageMaker endpoint. So we'll go into the elastic container registry here, okay? And you can see I've already got uh, my my uh, re uh, repository here. So if you recall from the last stream, the reason I already have created this specifically and I already do have the container within here as well is because for some reason, uh, these new M1 Macs, uh, the way they build the Docker images is not in the x86 architecture that uh, SageMaker would expect. So uh, because I am doing this whole live stream on my Mac here, I wanted to make sure that the container was already good to go. And the way I've been getting around this for now is actually just building uh, the container on my uh, Microsoft Surface over here, uploading it from the Surface, Microsoft Surface over here, and then making use of it here. So I, you'll, you'll see I uploaded this right before the stream started off of my Surface, and we can make use of that. But let's pretend I, I didn't already have this. Um, so simply enough, to create a, a ECR repository, you, you just see this orange button here. Uh, so go ahead and click that create, and then we're gonna keep this private, and then you just give it a name. So let's just call this movie readings model no two, number two. Well, let's call that number two. And then you can uh, uh, change some of the settings on here if you wanna do KS, KMS encryption or whatever, but you don't have to necessarily. Um, if you work for a big company, uh, you definitely wanna be mindful of things like that. So let's go ahead and create the repository. So you, you can see here, we got our movie ratings model and our movie ratings model number two. And if I come in here, our, our, the one that I just created, you can see that there's nothing in here. Uh, and so this is the same, if, if you followed along with the previous live stream, the same concept here of uploading the things is you could see over here on uh, toward the upper right, hand, upper right hand corner, we have the view push commands button. And so if we, uh, if you already have your uh, machine uh, authenticated to work with AWS, you basically just run these one after the, excuse me, one after the other. So let me go ahead and pretend like I'm going to. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal, iTerm. Um, remind me later. Well, you can go ahead and update it. Update it on my ZSH. Okay, uh, actually, I don't need to do this as part of the terminal because I have my own terminal here. Here, I'm gonna move as part of IntelliJ. All right, so IntelliJ, if I come into here and I can open up the terminal. Uh, why do I have two of these open? All right, so I don't want that. All right, so it wants me to first do an ECR login. And remember, my, my personal Mac is already authenticated with AWS. Uh, if you have not already set that up, you will need to. And I think I've got instructions somewhere on how to do that. So logging into ECR, so login was successful here. Uh, next step is actually building the image. So I'm gonna build the image like so. And you can see that it's building the image. And yep, I, I've already run this before a couple times, so you can see it's using cached things down here. Um, sorry, my logo's kind of in the way there. Okay, so that's done. Next things next, we will need to tag it appropriately. And so again, you can see here, I'm just, this little square here will copy these commands to your clipboard. I'm just doing these one after the other. And I'm not gonna run this last command just because like, it's not really worth me running it and it takes a little while. But this is, well, I, I'll go ahead and start to do it as, as if I'm gonna do it. So you can see here, it's already starting to do that push, but I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it. Uh, cancel, oops, didn't mean to press that button. Exit out of there. And if, if I actually did complete the upload, uh, then you would actually see the image in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this uh, just so we're not confused, delete. And, and by the way, at the end of the stream, I will make sure that we delete everything. That way we don't leave anything uh, up and running like, in, in, like we wouldn't want to do that. So let me pause for a second for another break there. Okay, so let's go back to our picture here. Uh, we have uh, put our artifact, our, our model training data in the S3 bucket, done. We have uploaded the container to the Elastic Container Registry, done. So now we're ready to go ahead and initiate the uh, SageMaker training job. So this might actually be a quick live stream because we're actually pretty close to the end. Uh, it, you know, that's the nice thing about SageMaker here is they'll kind of, I, I, it's, a, it's a little bit confusing the very first time you do it, but once you do it a couple of times, it's really not too bad. All right, so we have our container. Well, I want to keep this open, uh, SageMaker. So we'll go ahead and open SageMaker, open link in a new tab. 
<sighs> I'm a little bit winded from having to wear this mask here. So sorry about that, but I'm sure y'all don't want to see uh, my cauterized wound. <laughs> uh, is that TMI? I hope that's not TMI. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna ha I've got a couple tabs open here. So Stage Maker, Movie Ratings Model, Data. All right, so here we are in AWS Stage Maker. This is the front page interface that you might be familiar with. We've we've been in here a couple different times now. So off on the left here, you'll see a navigation on the left navigation. You you'll, you can toggle open the training, uh, and you can see that we can do a couple different things. So we're gonna select training jobs, uh, and you can see that I've already I've, I've already tested this out. Um, uh, a couple days ago. So in order to create a new training job, so you can see up on the top right hand corner here that there it says create a training job. Okay, so uh, first things first, we will need to, oh, so here's an interesting thing. Well, let me go ahead and put a job name. The job name can be whatever you want it to be. So I'm gonna call it mo uh, movie ratings model training job. Uh, can't have any spaces or anything. Um, well, it, it says that here. Uh, the one thing that you'll have to know is that you, you will have to have an IAM role that actually makes use or has access to be able to get to your data in S3. And that's simple enough simple enough as creating a new role. And uh, actually just, uh, you know, it, this is kind of nice. This is new. Uh, is you can, uh, it, it will kind of just by default try to make a role that is good enough for you. Now, now just to be completely transparent, if you work for a larger company, you will want to take this a little more seriously in the sense that you will want to make sure that this IAM role is very narrowly scoped, very narrowly can only do what it needs to do. And it's just that this idea of practicing least privilege. I, I am personally not as concerned with this. So you're gonna see here that I, I'm allowing any access to my S, I'm allowing access to all my S3 buckets. I'm allowing it to do anything with SageMaker. I'm allowing it, I'm, I'm basically giving it full access more or less. Okay, so you can see here that I've created the IAM role associated with that. Um, Okay, so here's the interesting thing is uh, algorithm source. So like I said before, if you take the AWS ML specialty, uh, Amazon obviously wants you to use their algorithms, which is why it's defaulted as number one. However, we are gonna use our own algorithm container in ECR as it notes here. So when I select the radio button, you can see that uh, this has changed a little bit. So it's asking us where is the container located? And so that is simply as simple as going back into here uh, where our container is. And if I look inside of our uh, our repository here, you can notice that uh, this is our image that I've already uploaded from my Microsoft Surface. And if I just click this button that says copy URI here, uh, it has now been copied to my clipboard. And then I can just do a uh, command V and paste it in there. So that there's my container. Uh, we can ignore some of these other things. I'm not I'm actually not familiar with this metrics thing is here. This seems new and same with this. Um, so next thing that we'll need to do is we do need to define an instance type. So this is where I wish that SageMaker was a little, or AWS in general is a little more clear because, um, you know, by default, most people don't know what these things are. I honestly don't know like every single, like what all these things are here. I do know all, I, this is a simple, uh, training job. So I want to get the smallest instance possible. And in this case, the smallest instance possible is this MLM 4X large. If you need some, I do know, like if you need like a G, uh, GPU, you have to use one of the P instances here. So the one of like these P, uh, ML.P2.XLarges. We don't need that. Uh, and obviously those cost a lot more. So we're gonna stick with the cheapest one possible. Uh, instance count is fine. Uh, additional storage volume per instance is fine. You, that This is gonna depend on your work, but we're obviously working with a really small little data set here. Uh, in fact, let's look at what the file size here is. The file size here is 16 kilobytes. Wow, <laughs> so that's really small. Um, and then you can set a maximum stop, stopping condition. I, I actually am gonna set this to 30 minutes because I, I wanna make sure that it doesn't run too long. Uh, but like I showed, you already saw before, I did some testing and um, the, the most amount of time it takes is, well, so I, I didn't really talk about this piece as well. What's actually happening here is when you initiate the, uh, the SageMaker training job, it's basically like instantiating a little computer behind the scenes that's gonna do this job for uh, uh, for however long. So when it instantiates the little computer behind the scenes, it's, it's kind of like doing an EC2 instance behind the scenes. And so the longest time it takes for a SageMaker training job is just starting up that instance. And that, it, that takes, you know, you, you saw it took four minutes to do the training job. I bet the, you know, three and a half minutes were just instantiating the container and the training job itself only took like 30 seconds. 
So, um, and you'll see that here in a little bit. All right, so that's good. Um, I'm not gonna do anything with VPCs, but again, your, your company might be interested in that. So here's the interesting one, and, and um, this is actually a little bit different, and, and why, because uh, you, you might have seen that in our other image that we were, or our other diagram that we were looking at, that uh, the train.p Wi-Fi was just inputting in the data, but now it's data slash train. And the reason it's data slash train is because you can actually apparently define multiple different channels now, meaning that if you wanted to have input data coming from two different locations, you can. Uh, but by default, the the one that we're going to use is the train, uh, train file. So we can ignore some of these other things. Uh, these are like more advanced kind of features. Uh, but the only thing that we need to note here is the, lo the S3 location of our data. So that's why I wanted to keep this open here. Uh, and in order to do that, so I'll just go ahead and click here. And then you can see up at the top here, this button that says click copy S3 URI. And you can even see it down here too, S3 URI. And so we're just gonna go back into here and uh, do a command V on here. Um, I'm going to ignore checkpoint for configuration because I'm not worried about checkpointing. Uh, and then, so the only, uh, yeah. And so the only other thing that we do need to uh, denote here is that uh, the, the output location of where we want to put these model artifacts in the end. So like I noted, I want it to be in the same bucket, but within the artifacts directory. So instead of, um, since we already have this on our clipboard, I'm just going to take this, peel this part off, and I'm going to put artifact. Actually, actually, let me double check. Did I call it artifact or artifacts? I think I did a plural. Yep, artifacts. All right, artifacts. Artifacts. And uh, I'm not going to worry about this. More optional kind of things. And if I did this right, we click the create training job and it should be off on its way. So this is going to take about four minutes. So as you can see, let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, and you could see all the, the information that we kind of populated already. So you can see that we are using our training image from ECR here. Uh, we have our IM image or our, our IM role that we created at, by with the, like the, the little wizard there. Um, if we scroll on down, you'll note that we have our, our training input data noted here. Uh, and then finally our output data configuration is putting our stuff here. And so if you want to see like the kind of the status of where things are going, you can click this view history button. And so you can see here is starting the training job. And like I said, the most amount of time by far is just, um, just getting this, the, 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 the computer behind the scenes instantiated. So this is going to take a bit. Um, anybody have any questions or anything? Cause we're actually nearing the end of the stream and that's okay because get doing the stream in a mask kind of sucks. <laughs> like if I'm being honest, uh, like it's, you know, br Breathing through a mask is not hard. Talking nonstop and trying to breathe through a mask is a little bit different. <laughs> All right. So I wonder why I did that. I didn't click that. Um, no, I guess one thing I can show you is, uh, so let's say, so you could see here that I actually did fail uh, my job the other day a couple times because I, I messed some stuff up by accident. So like one thing I want to show you is like, what, how, how can you look at like what happened? So let's look at this failed job here. And I don't know if this is gonna still show because I deleted some of the stuff here. But if you scroll on down, same interface here, you'll notice on, on monitor here, you can actually look at the output logs. So let's look at the view logs here. So if I look at the view logs here, uh, what, this is gonna take me into CloudWatch, which is AWS's service for like all things associated to uh, cloud related stuff. It looks like I got, I, I ran this a couple different times. Um, so let me go ahead and just open up this one. So you can see here that the this is the output logs for my container. And the reason that it failed is because it could not find op slash ml slash input slash data slash all data slash dot csv. And, and you, if you recall, um, this is because I was trying to use like the old nomenclature of things. And now I, I realize you actually have to define things per the, the, the channel that it's coming on. So in this particular case, it's trained. So that's why it kept failing. So uh, I guess that that was a nice little thing. Like if, if you do have a failure for some reason, uh, Cloud, SageMaker will put the logs of your container into CloudWatch, and then you can look at those uh, uh, those issues to see what you did wrong. Uh, and you can see I screwed that up apparently a couple different times. So I screwed it up on that one. Uh, screwed it up here. Uh, what did I do here? I forgot to put train again. <laughs> it apparently took me a couple different tries to figure out that I needed to put that train in here. Um, and then, oh, this one was another silly one where I tried to save the output to the op slash ml slash models directory. And as you can recall, uh, it's not models with an S, it's model singular, even though I'm outputting multiple models. 
Um, so that was my bad uh, a couple different times. Um, and then you can see this, another one. I don't remember what w DMB stands for. I think I was just being really stupid. <laughs> but you could see, like, this was my successful one. And the only logs in here is just noting some, like, uh, future warning uh, warnings. But this was actually a successful container. Okay, so let's go back into uh, our training jobs here and see how this is going. It's still in progress. Not surprising. This is going to take a little bit. Uh, okay, but it looks like it looks like it's so you could see that it prepared the instance then it downloaded the data and now it's downloading the training image and so we should see a completion here here pretty soon and then i, I want to show you what the output looks like and uh and then we'll do a cleanup and then we'll go ahead and wrap this up um so hope you all ha are having a good weekend so far uh today launched a game that i was looking forward to i'm a big gamer i uh single player games mostly so uh, the sequel to Horizon for or Horizon Zero Dawn, which came out on the PS4 back in 2017. So Horizon Forbidden West launched today. Uh, I haven't gotten to play it much. I've only gotten to play like 30 minutes, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. So I'm going to be playing a lot of that. So um, stalling for time <laughs> still. Uh, anybody else? Next week, so obviously I'm going to be uh, at Great Wolf Lodge. Uh, but another game coming out next week to Elden Ring uh looking forward okay so upload updating uploading generating training uploading generated training model okay so it looks like it did is completing it's just wrapping it's putting those artifacts on over into uh s3 and we will see that here in a second so uh hopefully here in like 30 seconds or so we should see this status turn to a uh happy little green uh green check mark saying success or completion or whatever it is i can't remember uh, and I'm sitting here trying to drink my drink through my mask here because, you know, that's real effective. Okay. So. Oh. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Elden Ring too. <laughs> that's what I was saying. Uh, lots of, this is a big year for video games because I think, I think the reason it is is, is because, um, you know, with COVID and all, all these games got delayed. So 2020 was pretty weak as far as video games go and so is 2021. But 2022, this is our year. We got... Horizon Forbidden West, we got Pokemon Legends Arceus, uh, we got Elden Ring, and, well, we got more. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2, Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 is the one I'm looking forward to most. So, our training job has completed. So you can see that it's completed uh, successfully. Uh, and if we were to go and look at the logs of this container uh, over in CloudWatch, as so, um, then you can see, we should just see uh, see those logs as like being like the, the warnings and nothing else. So yeah, same warnings here. Um, so let's go ahead and go back into S3. So in the artifacts here, you will now see that we have our model training job. So you can see that it created a little directory just for that. And when we delve down here, uh, you can see that we have our outputs. So if we delve down here, we have our model.tar.gz file. And actually, so if you, you can um, make use of this tar.gz file um, directly as far to, part of like uh, an endpoint or something, but I just want to show that what this tar.gz file is, is really just a compressed version of our models. So let's go ahead and download that. Uh, I'm going to do actions download as, uh, why did I do that? I'll just click the download button here. That makes more sense. Uh, allow. Okay. And it is putting it in my, uh, my, what do you call it directory? So my downloads directory, I term, uh, CD downloads, open dot. Okay. All right, so you can see here, this is my, here, let me get this out of the way. All right, so here's my downloads directory. So we got the tar.gz file here. So let's go ahead and decompress this, open with archive utility. All right, and you can see in here, after we've decompressed it, that lo and behold, our same pickle files that we generated as part of our local training. And friends, that's really it. That is how you train and model on SageMaker. Um, pretty easy actually not to i mean it can be a little bit confusing the first time you do it like th this whole thing kind of just threw me for a loop the first time the only things you got to be aware are just making sure that you have the directories correct um and then also at the very end you need to have this sys exit zero and then as part of the docker file you needed those special couple things too so you needed these special environment variables set we needed the stuff and then we needed our uh things uh, put in this working directory. Oh, and then I forgot we needed a little shell script here that th this train shell script that the SageMaker is looking for. 
Um, and again, we do not define an entry point on the Docker container because we can use this for multiple purposes. So if I were to use this again for inference, instead of invoking the transcript, uh, the transcript here, it would invoke uh, serve. Or if I was using this as a SageMaker processing job to do like the like the the data gathering that we did, um, which is what I'm doing here. So we have the data preprocess. So if I look inside preprocess here, uh, it's going into the data engineering directory main.py. And then you can see in the main.py file here, it's uh, doing getting all the data appropriately from all the different APIs that we've worked with. Okay, so before we wrap up today, let's go ahead and do a quick cleanup. Uh, I'm gonna just basically get rid of everything in this bucket because I don't need to save anything. I don't think I'm gonna delete the bucket itself yet though. So uh, permanently delete, permanently delete. Um, and then as far as the SageMaker training job over here goes, like. This is really all just metadata. I don't even know, I, there is not a way to delete this. And that's fine because it's all just metadata. You're not gonna get charged for like this metadata here. Um, it's just that you'll get charged for the storage of the artifacts and the storage of your uh, training data. So we, and, and your container as well. So we, we deleted the, all the stuff in S3 already. And then we can go ahead and delete this whole ECR repository. So I'm gonna go ahead and go here, delete, delete, done, okay. That's it. This is a lot, you know, doing a training job, not too bad. Um, all right, is there anything else that we need to delete? No, we can't do that. All right, so I think we're good. Uh, we're, we're done here for today. So that was probably the fastest stream I've ever done. And that's okay, because I'm getting, I am ready to get this, this mask off, this is kind of annoying. Okay, so uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I hope you found it informative. Uh, SageMaker is pretty nice. If you again understanding those nuances is a little bit weird. I am going to create another visual that uh, um, is like a what's the word I'm trying to say? Like a better visual than the one that SageMaker put together. Because uh, they even had some extra files in there that kind of make it seem like you need some more in there. Like there was a WSGI file in there, and you don't really need all that. You really just need you just need the entry point, which is that train script or that serve script, and then you need in your Python files to have like those special little things that point to the right directories. And then uh, whenever you're done, you need to have that sys.exit zero in there to make sure that SageMaker knows when things are done. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this stream. I am going to have some fun playing uh, Horizon Forbidden West now, and I'm ready to get this mask off. And I hope you all have a good weekend. And thank you for joining. I will see you in two weeks. Two weeks since I will be at Great Wolf Lodge next week. Uh, yeah, so I hope you all have a good weekend. Uh, thank you for watching. Yeah.